All right, everybody, hello and welcome. As always, I'm Sean. This is In The Mixer, episode 160 of our FC Isle of Man series. Happy Friday, wherever in the world you're watching from. And it's a huge episode because not only do we have the end to our fifth or sixth season in the Premier Division, I'm going to have to go and check what that actually is, but we've also got our very first FA Cup final. Another chance to add silverware to the cabinet at the FC Isle of Man Stadium. And for me personally, it's not a competition that I've won at any point yet in Football Manager 2020. And I can't actually remember the last FA Cup I won. I'm sure I probably did in previous iterations of the game, but definitely last year in our long-term save with Hashtag United, we didn't win that competition. So it's a real chance to add our first one to the tally for the channel overall as well. Now I've got quite a bit to recap, so we're going to jump straight in and see how we've gotten on. So first and foremost, as you guys can see above my head here, we have qualified for Champions League football with a top four finish. Interestingly, we're only on 68 points. If you go back over our previous league table positions, you can see last season we actually finished the season on 76 points, oh sorry, 74 points, and didn't make Champions League football. We made, or well, I mean we did, but we did it through winning the Europa League. We didn't make Champions League football from qualifying through the division, is what I'm saying. Even the season before that, 71 points was only enough for Europa League football again and a sixth place finish. The most we can get this season is 68 points if we win this final game on the last day of the year. I don't know what that necessarily means. Maybe it's just this is a more competitive overall division this season. Maybe it means there's a gap formulating between the likes of Chelsea, City, and United, and we just, like us, we haven't picked up points against them, and a lot of the other teams around us haven't either. If you look back to like two seasons ago, nobody got over 10 defeats if they qualified for Champions League football. That was the same for last season as well, where it was very tight. This season, we're going to qualify with 11 defeats, which isn't great. But if Arsenal lose their last game, they'll have, you know, over 10 defeats as well. So it's kind of, I don't really know what to make of it. It could mean that maybe some of the rest of the division is starting to plateau out, plateau out a little bit. And we need to push ourselves a little bit further to make like that elite level of clubs in the Premier League. We did overall cope okay with the challenges of competing in a variety of different competitions this season. Like we made the uh, final of the FA Cup, we won the UEFA Super Cup, we made it to the knockout rounds of the Champions League. And in reality, we probably would have made it a bit further in the Carabao Cup if we hadn't run into Manchester City in the fourth round. So I think we're doing okay from like a squad management perspective, but I do think we do need to make changes to like the overall depth of the squad. You can see our starting 11 is not terrible, but like outside of that, we really need to add, be adding a little bit more. And we've spoken about in previous weeks, becoming more versatile, maybe moving to a larger squad size to be able to play different shapes, different formations, all that sort of stuff. So there is a lot of work to do. We have got like a lot of young targets that we're keeping an eye of around the world. Some real high quality, some players that we're probably gonna have to pay a lot of money for as well. But, you know, like we are in a good position. I think we are heading in the right direction and heading towards being like an elite level side as long as we can keep the group together. Um, the big benefit that we probably should call out as well that I always forget to mention is that Arno Henri no longer has a release clause in his contract, which is fantastic. Kisham Haji, I think, still does, but we might try and get him to sign a new contract during the offseason. Fontana doesn't have one, so we're keeping a hold of him. Carlos Andre does, but it's huge. I don't see anybody paying it. We might offer him a new contract during the offseason as well to try and get rid of that. Pablo Rivera signed a new deal a couple of weeks back. So he's now on 100K a week and has a shitload of bonuses, as you guys can see here. But he's not got a release clause anymore, so there's no real danger of a team coming in and just taking him away from us at the drop of a hat, which is what killed us with Neil Peacock when he left. Esteban's got no release clause. Like We're really getting into a, a considered period of financial stability that's allowing us to keep, develop, and hold on to our best talents. Fed, uh, Mancini has a release clause as well, but I can't see anyone paying 100 million pound for a goalkeeper, to be honest. And financially, it wasn't that long ago that we were actually negative 191 million pound in debt. We're up to 24 million pound profit for the season, and we are one of the most profitable clubs in the division. Part of that's probably down to the fact that we have such a low salary per year. Like we're still less than what Reading were spending. Oh, sorry, we're still more than what Reading was spending, but they came up from the championship. Like sides like Fulham, West Ham, Aston Villa, Watford, who haven't won stuff in forever, still have like much, much larger wage budgets and bills than we do, which I think is very interesting given where we're currently sitting in the division. And the top sides like United, Chelsea, City, they are astronomical compared to ours. Like I think City in third spot has got five times the wage bill that we do. Chelsea over that, uh, United nearly six times. So like they're really paying quite a bit of money to keep their players together. And even that transfer spend, like if you look at what other teams have actually spent throughout the course of the year, they're, they're spending a fair bit of money still each season that we're not able to match. Really, we kind of nearly bankrupted the club trying to just keep up and keep ourselves in the division and in top half football. So only 2.3.2 million spent by the time you add in, you know, all the other players that we've sold off. 
throughout the course of the season, that's probably helping us quite a bit get to a positive bank balance. Now we need to go and take that a step further and continue to grow each season, continue to be profitable and continually, hopefully, spend money intelligently to develop the squad a little bit further. I think that does mean that we're going to continue focusing on Wonder Kid talents, which are the majority that you guys see here. Like, Let's just use this guy as an example, Jonathan Ramos. He's got no release clause, but you'd think you'd be able to pick him up for like 10, maybe 20 million pound. And then hopefully he develops, becomes a great player. And then if you do need to move him on, you move him on for like a same amount, if not more profit than what you brought him in for. That's the idea anyway. We'll see if it actually plays out that way. It very rarely actually does play out the way that I try and plan off seasons and they always become a bit of a mad scramble, but we'll figure it out. Other thing to keep an eye on as well is that like because of our success, so many of our talented youngsters are wanted by other clubs. We'll uh, see if anything comes of these challenges or these interest or these bids uh, throughout the off season as well. Now, switching over to our results, our schedule hasn't been too bad. Of course, in yesterday's episode, we played Leeds in our FA Cup semi-final, a good 2-1 victory. And then Bournemouth, a good 3-1 win as well. Two late goals, one from Fontana in injury time and one from Uli Schaefer in the 93rd minute, sealing the victory there. And what could have been a pretty, you know, difficult tie if it had gone to a one-all draw. We then did play out a one-all draw against West Ham. This one was frustrating. Of course, it was a set piece. Ian Mitchell from a deep free kick flicked onto a header. His first goal for West Ham, which just seems to happen to me all the time players scoring their first goal for their club when they play against us. Uh, we did have opportunities. Uli Schaefer actually didn't have a great game and missed a penalty. Keeping in mind, Rivera's picked up a knock, so we kind of had to force ourselves through with Schaefer even when he wasn't playing particularly well. Uh, we did turn that around, though. We got a good 1-0 victory against Reading. Probably gave us more difficulty than what was needed from a side already relegated and already heading back down to the championship. But Lucas Gabriel with a good goal on 60 minutes was more than enough to get us through comfortably, and they didn't really have that many chances either. Reading's a side that actually picked up quite a few of our players. They've got Larry Ortiz, who we had last season, was excellent for us in our Europa Cup run, or Europa League run, I should say. We've also got Lucas Fessler, who we had for a couple of seasons uh, when we first came up into the Premier Division. Didn't quite work out before he returned to Germany. He was at Bayern for a bit, made his way back to Reading, and again, hasn't had a great season this year either. Probably justifying our decision to uh, move him on. And the other one is the Sheriff, Toby Sheriff, who we had a few seasons ago. His face back's gone because I think I reused it on somebody else, but we had him on loan for, I think, our first season in the championship way back in 2028 on loan from Barnsley. We didn't sign him permanently in the end. Played against him a few times when we played against Barnsley. He went to Wigan for a bit and now made the jump up to Premier Division football with Reading. Hasn't had the greatest season. He will go back down to a championship level, but just always interesting to see old players of ours come back into the league and uh, come back into games and lineups against us. Which brings us to Southampton. Now, Southampton, over the last few seasons, they've been up and down. So, like you can see, they've had some peaks back in 2025, 26, finished in the top eight. They had a good little run where they went from finishing 17th in the league, just staying in it, to jumping up to sixth spot in 2032-33, and then third place finish two seasons ago where they got Champions League football. Since then, it's been a pretty steady spiral back down the league, 11th last season, currently, oh no, sorry, 11th season before last, 14th the year after that, and now they're looking to probably finish around 11th place again. So they have dropped off quite a bit during that time. They've got some FA Cup history. They won it back in 2034, so three seasons ago. So they have done well in that competition. They were runners up in 2032 as well. So they seem to consistently make it through to the final. And they don't have a terrible squad. They've got some good players. Didier Descamps is one. Not bad, but not great. French international. They've got Raphael, Portuguese midfielder, who's again solid, but not super spectacular. They've had a couple of guys that came through as Wonder Kids as well. Diego Noboto is one Brazilian Wonder Kid from the center of the park. They picked him up from Leeds, uh, where he'd been for a few seasons. Neil Pinegar was an English left back Wonder Kid for a few years. Got a few England caps his name as well. Didn't quite develop into the world beating talent I think they wanted him to be. And then Ralph Ruse is another one that we tried to pick up uh, a few seasons ago, actually, when we were in the Premier Division. He was a Wonder Kid that came through at PSV, and we just couldn't afford him in the end. Uh, they paid £31 million. Pound. We didn't have that cash four years ago, so... Interesting to see that they've kind of developed a similar strategy to us picking up young players, and they have got a relatively young squad. Most of the players here under the age of 26, which is interesting, but a big chunk of group around the same age, you'd think they're probably going to go through. If they're not performing well now, I don't see many players here that you'd think are going to get better and continue to grow and develop to push them back up towards the top of the table. Maybe they're looking for a big summer overhaul and a bit of a refresh, which is probably why they're consistently linked with our players. They're linked with Esteban at the moment. They're linked with Arno Henri as well. So, like, yeah, they're probably looking and casting some uh, envious stares over at our squad and the relatively young age that we keep 
within the group. And we are going to get two chances to play them. We're going to play them first away from home in the last game of the Premier League season. It is a dead rubber for us. Arsenal haven't had the greatest results over their last few games. So even if we do have a defeat today, well, we do want to try and get as many points as humanly possible. Three draws for Arsenal over their last three games has really kind of dragged them out. And before that even, just a, a penalty defeat to Southampton in those semifinals. So we can kind of, we're not going to rest players, I don't think, but we are tactically probably going to take two different attitudes into the different games. I think for the Premier Division match, we're going to go with this cautious mentality away from home, play a little bit more defensive, a little bit more on the break, and then maybe we might go ham and go after it a little bit in the FA Cup final because that's you know, that's what we do. If we're going to go down, we're going to go down swinging. So why not go after it a little bit? And I think playing this 4-4-1-1, it's going to allow us to maybe give Luck Rivera a bit of a spell. He's not 100% fit yet. Maybe we even give the likes of Arno, Henri, and Esteban a bit of a rest so that they're really ready to go for the cup final appearance. Not 100% sure what we'll do in that respect. Maybe we'll just go quick pick and have a look at what the assistant suggests. So he wants Rivera to start. I don't think I want to risk that. We're going to play with Schaefer. We'll give Haji a run out. We'll give Harold a run out. I might give Henri a bit of a spell though. I think maybe it's a good chance for Santana to get in and get some legs into him or get some run into his legs, I should say. Legs into him. That's not a thing that people say. But we might give Esteban a bit of a spell. Isaac Tuz can jump on the bench. Mateo's back from his broken ribs which have kept him out for quite a while. He can jump on the bench for Henri, and then we might put Fastman on the bench for Rivera as well. So leaving some players out, still a strong lineup, like still not a lineup to be complained about. It's really just these kind of up front, central midfield, center defense positions where we are resting a couple of players. But I'd still expect us to be competitive against the Southampton side that hasn't set the world on fire in the division itself. Do they actually have anything to play for? I probably should look at that before we go into it. They could potentially finish as high if they win they are. Their goal difference is terrible, but if they win, they could go above Liverpool into 10th position, which I guess is a bit of extra prize money. If they lose, they could get overlapped by West Ham, Watford, and Leeds and drop down to 14th spot as the lowest position that they could potentially finish. At the top end of the division, we probably should call that out as well. Um, United can only finish second. Uh, sorry, the United can only finish third, but it's a straight shootout between Man City and Chelsea for who's going to win the league. Chelsea currently top on goal difference, plus 56 is absolutely phenomenal we've had a good year and they've scored twice as many goals as we have for city last game of the season is an away trip to leicester who haven't done too great in the division 15th position for them and for chelsea last game of the season they're away at man united which is absolutely huge so there is a chance that we could see some uh, final day drama heading into the last fixtures here between those chelsea and city sides i think if chelsea win uh it would take quite a bit for city to score 15 odd goals to get beyond them on goal difference as far as the European places are concerned, uh, you'd think Brighton are maybe safe, or Brighton could drop out technically if Newcastle win and Brighton lose. Tottenham could drop out if uh, Bournemouth win and they lose and Newcastle loses, or Newcastle could go above them. So there's still a little bit to play for in and around those Europa League spots as well. Some interesting stuff going into the final day of the season, but we're going to submit our team and uh, hopefully do a bit of a comparison against the Southampton side as well. I don't know if they're going to rotate and have a similar tact for the uh, FA Cup final. It looks like a pretty strong lineup at first glance. Uh, we're, of course, going Mancini in goal, Warburton and Abdesamad as the defensive partnership. Carlos Andre at left wing back, Fontana at right wing back, Lucas Andre on the right wing, Harold on the left, Santana and Lind in midfield, Haji at the 10, and Schaefer leading the line up top. Southampton playing a 4-2-3-1 because every side in the Premier Division apparently plays a 4-2-3-1 at the moment. We already clicked on and looked at a couple of their players. Norberto previously at Leeds. He was a good player. He's their leading scorer for the season. Descomps is their captain, number 10, and the one currently trying to unsettle Esteban and Honoré as far as transfer actions concerned. Uh, Ruse in midfield, oh sorry, in defense, is a decent, decent Dutch central defender. Pinegar is an English left back who plays for the national side. Beardsley in front of him. Doesn't look anything special. Couple under 21 caps, 27 years of age now for Roger Beardsley. Always good to see Roger work its way into a, a player regen name. Dario Ostic on the other side, solid Serbian winger, but again, nothing super spectacular. I think we can beat this side, and I think they can be gotten at. Assertively, we are going to say, come on, lads, show me what you can do to keep our run going. I'm also going to assertively tell the defense that I've got faith in them. But again, it's not going to be the worst result in the world if we don't win this match, because we are going to set up very differently for the cup final, and hopefully... If they're scouting us, if they're expecting us to line up a certain way in that cup final, we can catch them by surprise a little bit as well. Lind with the ball to Santana. I actually don't know if that is a mechanic in the match engine. Uh, it probably isn't, and I'm just doing it for no reason, but I'm doing it anyway. The Scomps has come flying forward here, and from a wide area, thankfully drives it beyond the far post. Hell of a run 
from the uh, French number 10. We're outside the first 10 minutes without really having a shot. We have had a bit of the ball. We've, we've had a shot now, just as I'm saying that. They've picked up a yellow card and really the only highlight to speak of from that early, early highlight we saw from Descomps. City have taken an early lead in their match. 1-0 up against Leicester. So they're doing their portion. It'll be interesting to see how the United and Chelsea game goes. Lind with the ball now for us. Can switch it out to the right-hand side. Sends it out towards Lucas Gabriel, who's great in 1v1 situations. Gets to the ball and squares it up for Schaefer. Wonderful cutback. It is so rare that you actually see a winger get to the byline and then find that cutback ball. But that is absolutely fantastic work from him. And Uli Schaefer, 16th goal of the season for him. Does very, very well to just slide foot this one, side foot this one, slide foot this one, side foot this one into the other side of the net. It's his wrong foot as well. He's right. So he might be on. I'm getting ahead of myself here well and truly, but he might be on for a perfect hat trick if he can find a left-footed finish and a header. He's capable of both. Okay, and halftime is called. We are 1-0 up. Four shots, three on target, 39% possession for Southampton. Four shots, four on target, 61% of the ball for Isle of Man. Passionately, we're going to say, please with how things are going, lads, keep it up. And we haven't seen much out of Southampton. Well, we haven't created a lot on our own, I am more than happy to defend. United and Chelsea, a 2-2 draw at present at halftime, which is just ridiculous. If a 2 all draw is what uh, eventually costs Chelsea the title, they will be furious. And we're already through an hour, so we should look at making some subs here. Lind hasn't played particularly well. Might bring on Chris Miller just for a bit of run in his legs. We might switch his sides with uh, Santana. Santana's a little bit better defensively. And Haji not playing particularly well, so we'll give Fasterman some time as well. And I'm going to hold on to that last sub for the last few minutes. It's a very, very young, young FC Isle of Man lineup finishing up the season for us in the Premier League. And we're also going to use a Get Creative shout, which seems to have had no effect. It's very rare that that one doesn't get any sort of response out of the team. United have taken a lead against Chelsea, which would hand City the title. That must be a hell of a conundrum for any City fans or for United fans watching. Uh, and we're into the last 10 minutes, so we're going to make that last up. Harold hasn't played particularly well. Bring on Mateo. He's worked hard, getting his way back from those fractured ribs. He's hadn't had the best season with us. Originally, I had him slated to kind of start more and play more matches, but he just has struggled to get fit. Santana deep free kick. Milio comes out and claims for Southampton in goal. Is this highlight going to continue? He's gone a long ball forward. It should be brought down by Carlos Andre, and he is very well. Abdesamad out to Fontana. Now Santana. Finds Lucas Gabriel, was excellent in the setup for the first goal, but he's lost out to Pinegar on that one. Leclerc, back to Bramley. Now Pinegar again, left-hand side. They're going to look to sink Leclerc forward, and he has gotten goal side of the defender. Great save from Mancini, forces it out for the corner. Haven't seen a lot from Southampton. They had the first highlight, and they've had the most recent one now as well. Corner to be taken by Bramley, left-footed, headed away well by Fontana, and the highlight comes to an end. Decent little late flurry that we're seeing here from the uh, South Coast side. Southampton with the ball in towards Angelini, and it's Ruse put at home. I feel like that's a little bit against the run of play, but I'm not going to complain. A one all draw isn't going to kill us at the end of the season, and there is some late drama to come, I'm sure. Carlos Enrique flicks it on. Angelini gets the touch, and Ruse is already swinging a leg before it's even hit our defender. It's uh, ridiculous the way that works sometimes. Would see us finish on 69 points, which is hilarious as things currently stand. I'm going to throw one more Get Creative shout in. Have we got any late drama? No. Referee just calls full time. Sports Interactive, put that final highlight in. Put the final whistle getting blown. It makes for a better game. 16 shots, 10 on target, 44% possession. 8 shots, 6 on target, 56% of the ball. Passionately, we're going to say, or assertively, we're going to say, not happy with the performance, and at least everyone's responded positively, which is good. So one all draw, is that foreboding? Or is that kind of, you know, something that we need to keep an eye on heading into the Champions League? Or the Champions League. It's not the Champions League final, it's the FA Cup final. City win the Premier Division on the final day of the season. That is ridiculous. We're denied by a late goal. Mancini got the Man of the Match award though, so maybe it was coming more than it felt. 38.8 million for fit, achieving fourth place in the Premier Division. That's going to be huge for us. And collective bonuses have been paid out to the entire team couple of young players to have a look at. Sean Burgess here at West Ham. He doesn't look too bad. An advance forward that can dribble but can't really shoot. Kevin Rue, 18-year-old, 19-year-old Swiss player at Newcastle. Nothing nothing to really write home about. So we might restart that one, see if anyone else comes up. No one really out of the Portuguese Premier League coming up there. Our limit is 19, just anyone under 19 who looks good. Our fourth place finish in the Premier Division is a record high. Our previous is sixth place, which we got the last two seasons. So good to see we are progressing. But super interesting that we've progressed without getting as many points as we have in previous years. Is our goal difference the best it's been? No, we finished with 27 last year, 20 the year before that, 17 the year before that, negative one the year before that. And that first 
Season in the Premier Division, negative three. So we have consistently improved. It's probably taken longer than I would have liked, to be completely honest with you, but that's fine. Hopefully this is a platform now for us to consistently get Champions League football and consistently start challenging for titles as well. I'm going to clear out the squad and I'm going to give everyone maybe two days rest just as we look to find our focus. And then we are going to make that tactical switch. I do try and do this, but not the day of the next game, uh, but the week before so that we do the training associated with setting up in this 4-4 or 4 A few awards at the end of the season. Matthias Cerrone from City wins the Keeper of the Year. Mancini actually finished third, which is very impressive. 6.86 average rating for the Argentine. He's been excellent. I win the Manager of the Year, which is to be expected at any point. I've won the last two, actually, which is uh, very interesting. I don't think you guys usually see that one because it usually comes a couple of days after the season has ended, and we don't usually see it come up. Alrighty, jumping ahead a little bit, we are a few days ahead. So, of course, cup final, you've got to suit up. You've got to look sharp for it. The nation's going to be watching. FC Ireland take on Southampton. We are 5-4 to four favorites, which I think is very interesting. We're going into it undefeated in our last five. Southampton coming off the back of two defeats and a draw in their last three games as well. They've also got a few players out. Uh, Giles Hoste, fractured lower leg. He looks solid, but again, not spectacular. It's hard to tell if he would have actually played. Angel Mendes pulled ankle ligaments is unlikely. And De Vries, Jerome De Vries, who is a very good striker, who I think probably would have started in their lineup. So we've got a couple of knocks, a couple of things to worry about. We don't really have any selection headaches, which is fantastic. It's a historic FA Cup final for us, our first appearance in the final, and hopefully our first chance to add it to the trophy. We've also got a team meeting. I am going to assertively tell everyone, I'm proud of you for reaching the final, and while we want to win, we don't have to worry about it, and we're going to say passionately, after everyone's responded perfectly, that's exactly the overall reaction we're after. Look at that little boost to everybody's morale. That should hopefully see a calm side going into the start of the game. Interesting little slide coming up here, wages to turnover ratio. So we actually have the lowest wages compared to our turnover in the division itself, which is crazy. So we're only spending 17% of our overall income on wages, which is great to see. The other end of scale, Leicester, 58% of their turnover goes on wages. United, that one's kind of an interesting one. Like I would have thought City probably spent a much larger portion, but it looks like they earn a shitload of cash. 846 million pound turnover, that's crazy. We're earning comparatively 432 so they're earning twice as much as we are in a season. That is a very, very interesting little trait. We're going to give Harold a bit of praise here because he's had an excellent training week. All right, only one fitness test that we've had to worry about. 75 minutes suggested for Pablo Rivera. So if this goes to extra time, we might be in a little bit of strife. You can see here the preview again. We're expected to win the match. We're in strong form as well. Dan Vince, I don't think we've had much of a record with. His recent fixtures are kind of like lower division fixtures and a bunch of other different stuff. I don't think he's uh, refed many Premier League games this season wonder why he was appointed. That's an interesting one. It's Pedro Martins. I don't know too much about Pedro Martins. Looks like he starts the database as Olympiacos manager. He came across to Leeds, was England manager for a little bit as well, Spain manager, and now has been at Southampton from this season onwards. Not the greatest first season in uh, coaching history, but he doesn't look terrible. Team selection. This is where it gets interesting. We're going to go with this 4 2 4. We're going to get aggressive. We're going to go after it. We're going to hit quick pick and see what is suggested. So they've gone with some interesting stuff. The back five, I think, picks itself, and that's what they've gone with. Well, I'm happy with that. They've gone with Henri and Haji as the midfield too, which is very, very interesting. Haji's kind of plateaued out a little bit over the last five games. But by the same token, Lind, who I'd replace him with, hasn't played particularly well either. Other one that we have to look at, Frank Richards, 6.64 over the last five games. We're going to change that out. We're going to play Lucas Gabriel instead, but Richard can stay on the bench. We can only use five subs as well in the FA Cup final, so we're probably going to have Warburton play Lind play, Mejidu play, Richard play as the backup wing back. And maybe we can get one more player out there. Maybe we'll go with Mateo, just because he gives us good versatility. Can play as that inside inverted winger on both sides, which is great. We're going to switch Rivera's side and Schaefer's side. I think Schaefer's a little bit better suited to the deep lying role and Rivera playing off the shoulder. Otherwise, I think it's a pretty strong lineup. Really, that center mid spot is the only place we were worried about. That right wing spot, we can change and adjust throughout the course of the game as well. But it's an attacking lineup. If we're going to lose, we're going to go down trying to attack and trying to score as many goals as humanly possible. And it's a very different shape to the 4-4-1-1 that we used in the last league game against them. Looking at their lineup, it's not very different to the one that we just drew 1-1 with. So even leaving out Rivera, Henri, and Esteban, we got a good result. Descamps is going to play up front. That's one change. Ostic, I think, played on the right last time. Carriaga comes in on the right-hand side. Three-star current and potential ability, not... So anything to worry about too much. Angelini came off the bench in that game. 26-year-old Italian left winger. 
Three and a half star current ability, four star potential. So solid, but not spectacular. Any other changes that I haven't really picked out? Pinegar will play again. Suleimani on the right hand side. Did we play against him last time? Yeah, that name does ring a bell. But again, like they're just, they're okay. They're not anything that I think we should be terrified of. And a lot of our best players are better than a lot of their best players. Passionately, we're going to say here, great opportunity to so say all the pundits have been right to back you up. Everyone's responded positively. I'm going to assertively tell the defense that I've got faith in them as well. If we get a good defensive performance, like that's that's 90% of football. They've immediately got a corner. Descomps with the ball. Henri with the header away. Schaefer can turn, and we might be able to counter-attack here. Long ball forward to Rivera. Can beat a man, but Suleimani with a good tackle. Carriaga wins it back. Back to Roos. All the way back to Emilio. Don't all go to the ball, thankfully. They show some restraint and drop off a little bit. Long ball forward should be recovered by Fontana. Esteban now. This highlight is going in many different directions. I thought it was going to be a goal from them from a corner, but we've managed to keep possession. We're managing to work our way forward now. Lucas Gabriel, deep ball towards Rivera. It's clipped the crossbar and then cleared away. Angelini with the eventual clearance as the highlight comes to an end. Early days, we've already hit the crossbar. England FA Cup, that's the result we want to keep an eye on. And maybe down the bottom here, we keep an eye on, I don't know, Southampton's formation. Let's just keep an eye and see if that changes throughout the course of the game, if they come out a little bit more and try and attack a little bit. All right, goal kick to be taken by Mancini. So we start in possession. They send two men to the ball, which is good. Henri drops off to try and pick it up. Now Hardy with a little turn of space and a ball over the top for Schaefer, who has gotten goal side. He can finish quite well. It's a good save from Milio in the Southampton goal. They're leaving a high line. They're giving us that space in behind. Hardy now to take the resulting corner towards back post. Abdesimar was there, but it's cleared away. Ostich now comes forward for Southampton. We've got to be careful here. Wide right area. Don't overcommit to the ball. Good tackle from Henri, and he clears it up the line. Wonderful recovery run and challenge from the uh, French midfield. French midfield. French midfielder is what I'm trying to say. Uh, Esteban will pick up the ball back here. Ostich's long clearance is to no one in particular. Back to Mancini. Now Abdesimard. Wide left area. Finds Carlos Andre. Abdesimard again. Back to Carlos Andre. Now Henri. Carlos Andre again. Good passage of play here. He's tried to dribble in a poor area. Thankfully, Schaefer recovers possession. Hardy now works his way out to the right. We've got a 2v1 if we work this correctly. Lucas Gabriel. Fontana exchange passes, and Gabriel goes near post. Fifth goal of the season for him, and a huge, huge goal in the scope of this FA Cup final. Wonderful, wonderful effort. Hardy plays a nice little pass in here. Fontana doesn't waste too much time, finds Gabriel, and then he's great in 1v1 situations. Skip past one challenge, goes near post when maybe he could have squared it up, maybe could have looked to bring another player in play, but I'm not going to question the goal. He, uh, with an excellent finish, gives us the lead early on. They have got a corner, though. Descomps to take toward back post, and Roos has managed to hit the crossbar. First real chance we've seen from the Southampton side. Pinegar puts it back in. Mancini punches instead of claiming, and Harold sends it up the line for Rivera. This could go end-to-end -end here. Rivera turns away and has gotten goal side of Roos, who does quite well, actually, to stay with him. Ball in towards Schaefer. Cleared away by Ostiac, only as far as Henri. Sends it out right to Fontana. He's got a bit of work to do. Wide right area. Tries to cross and it's closed down for the throw-in. Will this highlight continue? It doesn't. End-to-end -end stuff, though. Breathless in the opening half. We're going to use a demand more shout with 10 minutes remaining. If we can make it through to half time with this lead, I think it puts us in a good position going into the second half. Deep throw-in here for Southampton. Back to Suleimani. Now Bramley. Good little triangle there played to Carriega. Comes forward past halfway. On retracks him. They find Ostiac in the middle. Untracked runner through midfield. And thankfully his drive... Edge of the area, just beyond the far post. We're giving them a bit of space here. Now this puts me in two minds. Half time, one nil up. Six shots, three on target, 46% possession for Southampton. Seven shots, three on target, 54% of the ball for us. Do we stay on attacking or do we try and be a little bit more conservative in the second half? Rivera's not played well. Harold's not played well. Do we go back to that cautious mentality? You know what, let's give it 15 more minutes. Let's um, tell everyone assertively that we've got to guard against complacency. Everyone seems to have responded perfectly. Let's give it 15 minutes. And if we're still on top with in 15 minutes, if they haven't immediately changed anything up in terms of their formation or in terms of their personnel on the park, we might make an adjustment. They've just made a slight change there in the front three. Clearance here with Abdesimard. Esteban with the ball now. All the way back to Mancini. If we get a second goal, we might shut up shot. We'll see and have a look at that at the end of this highlight. Mancini just exchanges passes with the centre-backs, just looking to try and drag them forward a little bit. That's the vertical tiki-taka part of our in-possession instructions. Haji, balling behind for Rivera. Lovely touch around the defender on his left foot, and he's just put it straight at the keeper, who does very well, actually, to push it around the far post. Haji with the corner towards the middle. 
Let's head it away. Suleimani's going to come forward for Southampton here. This highlight just keeps on going. Right-hand side run. Henri with a wonderful tracking run and challenge puts it out as the highlight comes to an end. We're going to hit pause. All right, what are we going to do? 30 minutes remain. Do we try and defend it? I think we try and defend it. Rivera was only going to be you know used for 75 minutes anyway, so let's adjust this around. Let's get Haji playing at the 10 because he's not had a terrible game. And we might bring on David Lynn for a little bit of steel in midfield. And then on that left wing, how do we want to work that? We didn't really put a left winger on the bench. Maybe we give Harold the benefit of the doubt and try and have him see out the last few minutes. Desimard's not playing badly. Esteban's not playing badly either. Now we go to two covering central defenders and just have the defensive line drop off as much as possible. We'll just make that one sub. Maybe I'll just try and get real jammy with my subs. Maybe I'll make one every 10 minutes or so. We've also used to get creative shout, which everyone seems inspired by. Emilio has been their best player, 7.0 match rating, which I think is a good indication that we're on the right track. Let's make that other sub. Harold hasn't played poorly, but we're going to bring on Mateo and give him 10 minutes or so. And then we're going to hold on to that last sub for the last 10 minutes and then uh, see if we can't just chew into some time in this contest. It is inviting trouble. It is inviting pressure, but we haven't seen any highlights since we changed our shape. All right, last sub, 86 minutes played. We've hit pause. Henri hasn't had the greatest game. Esteban, Carlos Andre. We're just going to bring on Richard for Gabriel. Straight like for like swap. Not that Lucas Gabriel hasn't played fantastically well. He has potentially scored the winner for us. And we're going to use a demand more shout as we head into additional time. Fingers, toes, arms, eyes, ears crossed. Three minutes to be added on at the end of the FA Cup final. We're through that now. And the referee calls full time. It's a phenomenal performance from the boys and another trophy for the cabinet. 1-0 victors in the end. Southampton had 13 shots, 6 on target, 46% possession. Not that many highlights to speak of, though. They did rattle the crossbar. 15 shots, 9 on target, 54% of the ball for Isle of Man. And Lucas Gabriel makes himself a hero with the winner. Passionately, I'm going to say congratulations, boys. Enjoy these moments. And everybody responds fantastically well, which is always wonderful to see. FC Isle of Man lift the FA Cup. Not one that uh, I expected to see anytime soon, but a fantastic performance. Melio gets a 7.6 and then player of the match award in the Southampton goal. We do a double after winning the FA Cup and the UEFA Super Cup. I don't think anyone really refers to that as a double, but that's fine. We'll take it. And we get another three and a half million pounds, which is absolutely huge. Pretty much the whole squad should actually get an FA Cup medal because we do rotate quite a bit in the early rounds. And the fans have been fantastic. 10 to 1 preseason odds for the FA Cup. I wasn't, wouldn't have expected that, to be honest. And the board are very, very happy, which is fantastic. Horses there, the Schalke manager looking at Arno Henri. Everybody gets a fair bit of cash for winning the FA Cup. There's nobody of note in uh, the Serie A. Uh, there's nobody really of note in the Spanish First Division either, which is a little bit disappointing. I would have thought our scouts had uncover something. Arno Henri and David Lim both get 100k bonuses for winning the FA Cup. I forgot that they had those, but that's fine. All right, now we switch to our end of season stuff, and there's a few players inducted in the overall best 11. David Lind makes it into the side, which is an interesting one. 143 appearances for us, though. That's uh, impressive. That's gone very, very quickly. Esteban and Fontana also make the starting lineup. There's still some old faces in there. Kubis, who's now at Hamburger SV over in Germany, is still in there. Escobar is in there, who's at Fosinone over in Italy. Players that we had in and around our championship winning campaign. Omprion is still in there, which is from miles ago. Still 36 years of age, has been playing for Spennymoor. He's been at Spennymoor for ages. He was at Hereford for quite a while. Like He was back with us like 10 seasons ago. Crazy that uh, his career has continued. He was excellent for us, but he shouldn't be in like our overall best 11. Still led by Charlie Ball from the very first seasons. Uh, 67 goals in 57 games across the first two years before he moved up to Gainsborough. I'll never forgive him for that. Simeon Ure still in there as well from the early seasons as well. He was fantastic the first two years for the club. Nigel Aris on the left wing. Like crazy, these players are still in the overall best 11, even though they played in the first season. Like divisions... 10 divisions ago, we're now making like Europa League finals. We're now making FA Cup finals and our players can't get anywhere near it. End of season awards, Arno Henri, 58% of the vote. That's fantastic. Hisham Haji, I'm guessing this is going to be a free kick against Norwich. It's where he got most of his goals. It was when we play in that weird asymmetric formation. We'll check it out in three dimensions though. He didn't score a lot of goals, but I have a feeling he pulls out a cracker every now and then. It is a free kick and it's a wonderful free kick to be fair. Bends it around the wall. Keeper maybe could have done better. Did start from a central position. And the first goal, or the second goal, in a 2-0 victory on the day. Uli Schaefer gets signing of the season, a free transfer from Bayern Munich, and young player of the year, Arno Henri. Starting 11 is interesting. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Haji is playing deep. Lin's not in the team. And Fasterman is playing at the 10. 
Fasterman played maybe five games for us this season. He made one Premier Division appearance, five more off the bench, two FA Cup starts, one Champions League start, five overall starts, and six substitute appearances for the season, and he's in our best 11 for the year. I don't think that's quite calculating correctly, boys. Interesting to see Harold and Richard make the team of the year as well on the wings. They're not the starting players in that position, but, you know, that's just the way that the football works sometimes. Expectations for next season we're going to stick with. They expect us to finish in the top half, which is great. We can work with that. Passionately, we're going to say it's been a long season and I hope you all had a good great beginning. Come back fully refreshed because I'm aiming to finish in the top half next time around and everyone's responded positively, which is fantastic to see. Good to finish the season in good morale. So it goes away for a well-earned break and celebration. We get to pick our pre-season training camp. We might go to China. I think we went to the USA last year. Now, let's go to the USA. Biggest media market in the world. We can make the most of that. And a wonderful, wonderful performance to finish off the year. Now, we do have a fair bit of work to do, I think, in terms of the off-season. And we are going to take our time with it because next week, we're actually going to have one season one to save to break things up a little bit. I've got a club in mind, but if you've got your own suggestions, do drop it in the comment section below. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and coming along this journey with me. It's these episodes that Easy wants to record because we've won quite a bit and the game's not driven me nuts. If you want to help us celebrate our first FA Cup triumph, drop a like on this video, subscribe to the channel to be kept up to date on all of our future videos. This series will continue right up until at least the 200 episode mark. We'll see if we continue going beyond that. It depends really on the uh, Football Manager 2021 release date and what happens in and around that. But more than anything, as always, I just appreciate you guys watching. That's the part that means most to me. As always, I've been Sean, and I'll see you all again in the mixer.